Welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Regent Street to tell you all about this iconic part of London. My name's Steve, and each week I'm going to bring to you the facts, history and information about different parts of this great capital. So, if you have been to London, are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget, you can visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now, to this week's podcast. Regent Street is one of the major shopping streets in the West End of London. It is named after George, the Prince Regent, later George IV, and was laid out under the direction of the architects John Nash and James Burton. It runs from Waterloo Place in St James's at the Southern End, through Piccadilly Circus and Oxford Circus to All Souls Church. From there, Langham Place and Portland Place continue the route to Regent's Park. The street's layout was completed in 1825 and was an early example of town planning in England, replacing earlier roads including Swallow Street. Nash and Burton Street layout has survived, although all the original buildings except All Souls Church have been replaced following reconstruction in the late 19th century. The street is known for its flagship retail stores, including Liberty, Hamleys, Jaeger and the Apple Store. The Royal Polytechnic Institution, now the University of Westminster, has been based on Regent Street since 1838. Regent Street itself is approximately 0.8 miles, 1.3 kilometres long, and begins at a junction with Charles II Street as a continuation of Waterloo Place. It runs north to Piccadilly Circus, where it turns left before curving round the quadrant to head north again, meeting Oxford Street at Oxford Circus. It ends at a junction with Cavendish Place and Mortimer Street near the BBC Broadcasting House, with road ahead being Langham Place, followed by Portland Place. The southern section of the road is one way, northbound, and part of the A4, a major road through West London. Nearby tube stations are Charing Cross, Piccadilly Circus and Oxford Circus, the lattermost being one of the busiest underground stations in London, and is where three main lines, the Central, Bakerloo and Victoria lines meet. Several bus routes, such as the 6, 12 and 13, run along Regent Street. Regent Street was one of the first planned developments of London, an ordered structure of London streets, replacing the medieval layout, which had been planned since just after the Great Fire of London in 1666, when Sir Christopher Wren and John Evelyn drew plans for rebuilding the city on a classical formal model. After a lack of progress, houses were rebuilt on the Old Street network. In 1766, John Gwen complained in London and Westminster Improved that there was a lack of planning throughout the West End, and that it would be useful to construct a thoroughfare linking Marylebone Park, now known as Regent's Park, with the Prince Regent's Carlton House. John Fordyce was appointed as Surveyor General to the first Commissioner of Woods and Forests in 1793, and concluded that there should be a suitable road in place by 1811. When the lease for Marylebone Park ran out and the ownership reverted to the Crown. It was hoped that the road could link Pall Mall and the Haymarket, which had declined to become Down Market. A further problem was increased congestion around Charing Cross, which would benefit from road improvements. The street was designed by John Nash, who had been appointed to the Office of Woods and Forests in 1806, and previously served as an advisor to the Prince Regent, and by developer James Burton. Nash proposed his own plans for the street in 1810, following the death of Fordyce, envisioning broad, architecturally distinguished thoroughfares and public spaces, and planned to construct a straight boulevard as seen in French cities. But this was not possible because of land ownership issues. Nash's final design resulted in a road situated further west than on previous plans, and Nash believed the road would run down a de facto line separating the upper classes and nobility in Mayfair with the working classes in Soho. The construction of the northern section of the new street involved demolishing most of the existing Swallow Street, which had become run down and was an ideal candidate for regeneration. The road was designed to curve east between Oxford Street and Piccadilly, so that it did not meet St James's Square and the circuses allowed visual continuity down the street. The central section, known as the Quadrant, was designed for shops appropriated to articles of fashion and taste, 
and was Nash's centerpiece for the street. It was built with a colonnade of cast iron columns, allowing commuters to walk along the street without having to face bad weather. The buildings along the quadrant had different facades, a deliberate choice by Nash to break away from the uniform design of the previous century and a pragmatic means of using what building materials were available and what clients wanted. The road was planned to end outside Carlton House in Pall Mall, the residence of the Prince of Wales. Nash insisted that businesses on the street should be of high quality to rival nearby Bond Street. Common trades such as butchers or greengrocers were not allowed. The design was adopted by an Act of Parliament in 1813, which permitted the commissioners to borrow £600,000 for building and construction. The street was intended for commercial purposes and was expected that most of the income would come from private capital. Nash took responsibility for design and valuation of all properties. Construction of the road required demolishing numerous properties, disrupting trade and polluting the air with dust. Existing tenants had first offered to purchase leases on the new properties. The Treasury supported the proposal because, in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars, there was an urgent need for the government to create jobs. Government expenditure was low because the design relied heavily on private developers, such as Nash himself. The buildings were let on 99-year leases, as was common at the time, and the income could be recouped in the form of ground rent. By 1819, the Crown was receiving regular rent and the street was becoming established. At first, it was named New Street and became a dividing line between Soho, which had declined socially and economically, and the fashionable squares and streets of Mayfair to the west. Carlton House was demolished after completion of the works in 1829 and was replaced by Carlton House Terrace, designed by Nash and the son of James Burton, Decimus Burton. Regent Street was the first shopping area in Britain to support late-night opening in 1850, when shopkeepers agreed to keep stores open until 7pm. During the 19th century, Regent Street became established as the centre of fashion. Shops expanded into multiple properties, selling imported and exotic products to appeal to niche consumers. By the end of the century, fashions had changed and the original buildings were small and old-fashioned, restricting trade. The colonnade constructed by Nash was demolished in the mid-19th century for fear it might attract doubtful characters. Other buildings were not up to modern building standards. Some had to be extended and were structurally suspect. As the 99-year leases came to an end, Regent Street was redeveloped and between 1895 and 1927, under the control of the Office of Woods and Forests and Land Revenues, now known as the Crown Estate. The modern Regent Street is the result of this redevelopment. No original structures survive except south of Oxford Circus for some Nash designed sewers. The current design is an example of Beau Art's approach to urban design, an assembly of separate buildings on a grand scale, designed to harmonize and produce an impressive overall effect. Strict rules govern the reconstruction. Each block had to be designed with a continuous unifying street facade and finished in Portland stone. The first redevelopment was Regent House, just south of Oxford Circus. The stylistic tone for the rebuilding was set by Sir Reginald Bloomfield's quadrant. The architect, Norman Shaw, then aged 73, was brought in to draw up proposals for the circus and the quadrant after early plans were considered unsatisfactory. His scheme was approved in principle, but subject to indecision and dispute, on both property acquisition and retailers' demand for bigger display windows. Shaw's design for the Piccadilly Hotel was completed in 1908 with modifications, while the quadrant was rebuilt by Bloomfield, adapting Shaw's designs. The work started in 1923 and was completed by 1928. Significantly, no accommodation was built above any of the retail properties, contributing to the demise of the West End as a place of residence. A limited number of architects were responsible for the redesigned street, including Sir John James Burnett, Arthur Joseph Davis and Henry Tanner. The work was delayed by World War I and not finished till 1927. Its completion was marked by King George V and Queen Mary driving in state along its length. The only remaining Nash building is All Souls Church and the buildings on the street are at least Grade II listed. All of the properties are in the Regent Street Conservation Area. Hi there, and thanks so much for listening to this podcast on the history of London. 
And if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now, if you want to get more involved with London Visited, don't forget you can join us as a member by going to patreon.com forward slash London Visited with so many different benefits. Or you could purchase a 4K photograph of London from our website, londonvisited.co.uk, both of which support us and keep the channel going. Once again, thanks for listening. And now, back to the podcast. By the 1970s, Regent Street had started to decline because of underinvestment and competition from neighbouring areas such as Oxford Street or shopping centres away from central London. In 2002, the Crown Estate, which owns most of Regent Street on behalf of the Queen, started a major redevelopment programme. In 2013, the estate sold a quarter of the 270,000 square foot, 22,000 square metres, Regent Street Quadrant 3 building to the Norwegian Oil Fund. While later that year, Hackett London bought the lease for the Ferrari store on Regent Street for £4 million. Smaller shops have been replaced by larger units. The street is now the flagship location of several major brands, including Apple and Banana Republic. The largest part of the plan was the reconstruction of the quadrant, close to Piccadilly Circus, which was completed in 2011. It offers 200,000 square feet, 19,000 square metres of office space spanning over seven floors. Two Art Deco design restaurants have also been restored, and the development includes a small number of apartments. The Crown Estate moved its own headquarters from Carlton House Terrace to Regent Street in 2006. The department store, Dickens & Jones, was established at No. 54 Oxford Street as Dickens & Smith before moving to Numbers 232 to 234 Regent Street in 1835. It was renamed Dickens & Jones in the 1890s after John Pritchard Jones became a business partner and, by the turn of the 20th century, employed over 200 people. It became part of the Harrods Group in 1914 and expanded to cover numbers 224 to 244 in 1922 in a new building designed by Sir Henry Tanner. In 1859, House of Fraser took over the store by buying the Harrods Group. In 2005, House of Fraser announced that the store would close the following year after it had been making losses for several years and could not keep up with the more fashion-conscious department stores elsewhere. The building has been redeveloped with small shop units on the lower floors and flats and offices above. The Liberty Department Store is based at numbers 210 to 220. It was founded by entrepreneur Arthur Lazenby Liberty, who had been inspired by the 1862 International Exhibition and wanted to open an oriental warehouse. He opened his first shop, East India House, in 1875 at number 218A, selling silk garments and various oriental goods. The shop expanded into other properties on Regent Street in the 1880s, separated by a jeweler's shop which was bridged by a double staircase called the Camel's Back. Liberty later took over all of numbers 140 to 150 Regent Street. In 1925, this complex was replaced by two new buildings and a mock Tudor building, built by architects Edwin T. Hall and his son Edwin S. Hall, constructed from the timbers of two ships, HMS Impregnable and HMS Hindustin, on neighbouring Great Marlborough Street, connected by a footbridge over Kingley Street, which separates the properties and can still be seen today. The Toy Store Hamleys is at number 188 Regent Street, just south of Oxford Circus. It was founded as Noah's Ark at number 231 High Holborn in 1760. An additional branch opened at numbers 64 to 66 Regent Street in 1881, while the original High Holborn building burned down in 1901, moving to numbers 86 to 87. The store was frequently the first to market the latest games and toys, and became a strong seller of table tennis equipment in the late 19th century, allowing the sport to become popular. The business moved to numbers 200 to 202 and moved to the current address in 1981. Hamleys claims to be the largest toy shop in the world. The main London branch of the clothing store Jaeger is at numbers 200 to 206 Regent Street. It was founded in 1884 by Louis Tomalin, who was inspired by naturalist Gustav Jaeger's pioneering use of anti-animal fibre-based clothing. The first shop on 4th Street had Dr. Jaeger's sanitary woolen system inscribed above the door. Oscar Wilde was a regular visitor to the shop. Henry Morton Stanley is known to have worn Jaeger clothing during his search for Dr. David Livingstone in Africa. 
as is Robert Falcon Scott on his fated trip to the South Pole. The company moved to Regent Street in 1935. The Apple Store opened on Regent Street on the 20th of November 2004. At the time, this was the first such store in Europe, with others being in the United States and Japan. It was the largest Apple Store worldwide until the opening of an even larger store in Covent Garden in August 2010. Austin Reed's flagship store was at numbers 103 to 113 Regent Street for more than 85 years. It had an atrium at its centre, housing glass lifts allowing viewing across all floors. The lower ground floor sold women's wear and also housed Austin's, the refurbished Art Deco barbershop. In May 2011, the British fashion retailer Superdry announced it would move into the building, paying £12 million for the lease. In return, Austin Reed moved to a former Accuscutum shop on the other side of the road. In 2016, Austin Reed filed for administration, ending over 100 years' presence on Regent Street. In 2017, Microsoft announced plans to open a flagship store on Regent Street. Immediately north of Regent Street is the BBC's headquarters, Broadcasting House, whose front entrance is in Langham Place. Several national radio stations are broadcast from this building. The site had formerly been a building on the gardens of Foley House, designed by James Wyatt and called Wyatt's House. It was demolished in 1928, with much of the fixtures ending up in the Victoria and Albert Museum, to construct Broadcasting House. Construction was challenging because the building had to be visually similar to other properties on Regent Street, yet also had to contain over 20 soundproof studios. The exterior is built of Portland stone, and above the front entrance is a sculpture by Eric Gill. Broadcasting House was first used by the BBC on the 2nd of May 1932, and total construction costs were £350,000. It was too small for all services, and St George's Hall, next to All Souls, was used for a variety of broadcasts until it was demolished during the Blitz. On the 15th of October 1940, the building took a direct hit, killing seven people, and later that year a landmine exploded on Portland Place, causing widespread fires in Broadcasting House. Despite the damage, it survived the war and became one of the best-known buildings associated with radio broadcasting. Subsequently, the BBC expanded with additional studios at Maida Vale, followed by the former headquarters of BBC Television, BBC Television Centre at Wood Lane. In the 2000s, Broadcasting House was expanded to include a new wing and modernised the site, replacing earlier extensions. The Paris Theatre was located in a converted cinema in Lower Regent Street, near other BBC buildings. Several rock groups performed live concerts there, including The Beatles, Queen and Pink Floyd, which were simultaneously recorded for broadcast. The BBC stopped using the theatre in 1995. All Souls Church is at the top of Regent Street next to Broadcasting House. It was built in 1823 out of Bath Stone and consecrated in 1824 and is the only surviving building in Regent Street that was designed by John Nash. The Café Royal, located at 68 Regent Street in the Quadrant, was opened in 1865 by Daniel Nichols and became an institution of London High Society. In 1895, Oscar Wilde argued with Frank Harris in the café about his proposal to sue the Marquess of Queensbury for libel over Wilde's alleged homosexuality. Wilde went ahead with the trial, which ultimately led to his own arrest and imprisonment. The present building, by Sir Reginald Bloomfield, dates from 1928 and is Grade II listed. It was closed in 2008, and the building which houses the cafe was bought by a subsidiary of Algrove Group, as part of the Crown Estate's plans to redevelop this part of Regent Street. It is the oldest shop on Regent Street. Regent Street is home to several events throughout the year, the Regent Street Festival happens annually, and during this time, the street is closed to traffic. In September, there is a series of fashion-related events, dubbed as Fashion and Design Month, which has been running since 2015. In an interview with David Shaw, the head of the Regent Street portfolio, he said that for FDM 2016, they work with many talented individuals across a variety of events, combining creative talent with our established stores. There have been Christmas lights on Regent Street in various forms since 1882. The current regular displays date from 1948, 
when the Regent Street Association decorated the street with trees. Since 1954, the Regent Street Association have arranged annual Christmas lights. There is a different display every year, and the switching on ceremony occurs during November. On the 6th of July 2004, half a million people crowded into Regent Street and the surrounding streets to watch a parade of Formula One cars. References to Regent Street appear in Nicholas Nickleby, when the character Lord Frederick Volsvoit lived in an apartment in Regent Street. This reflected the nature of the street in the mid-19th century, when it was still a fashionable residence for the upper class. Regent Street is also a location on the British version of Monopoly, as a group of three green squares with Oxford Street and Bond Street. The three properties are grouped together, as they are well known for their retail and commercial backgrounds. I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Regent Street. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe and get updates on new shows, And also, please leave us some feedback. Please let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts by emailing me directly at londonvisited at gmail.com or by contacting us on Twitter by at londonvisited or Instagram at londonvisited. Thanks for listening and really hope you've enjoyed our podcast and see you very soon.